What's up guys and welcome to a three-way comparison between three of the best affordable sports cars that you can buy for under $40,000 today. The 2007 Honda AP2 S2000 versus the brand new 2024 Mazda MX-5 Miata ND3 versus 2024 Subaru BRZ TS. All of these cars are front engine, rear wheel drive, six speed manual transmission, limited slip differential as standard, electric power steering racks, and they all weigh less than 2,900 pounds. In the case of the BRZ and S2000, they're a little over 2,800. In the case of that RF or retractable fastback Miata, it's just under 2,500 pounds. They're all modestly powered with naturally aspirated high revving four cylinder engines. They're just an absolute recipe for fun, but which is the most fun? That's what we're gonna find out. So a few details about this S2000. The owner Josh mentioned that he just picked it up less than a month ago. It's got 53,000 miles, Silverstone exterior, red and black interior. This thing is about as mint as it can be. The only mods on this are the K&N FIPK intake, NVIDIA Q300 catback exhaust, which is funny because I had the exact same intake and exhaust on my 2004 S2000 10 years ago. And this car also has an unknown brand of aftermarket rear sway bar. That's it. We're powered by the F22C engine. It's a 2.2 liter inline four cylinder, naturally aspirated, 237 horsepower, 162 pound feet of torque, rev limiter, 8200 RPM. Redline is at 8,000. And given that this is an 06 plus model year, it has drive by wire instead of a cable throttle. Gosh, this is probably my 50th, 60th S2000 review, but I'll never say no. The best manual transmission of any car ever. I stand by that. There's the VTEC. Oh my God. I will never tire of driving an S2000 on a winding road. Even if it is an almost bone stock AP2 with its soft wallowy suspension. suspension and steering definitely not its strong points but let me just shut up for a second and let you hear the VTEC and it's just amazing that you can shift so quickly with this transmission and the throttle response is so good sticks a bit and the brakes the stock brakes of the s2000 whether it's an ap1 or ap2 have always been one of the major weaknesses of this chassis 
for track driving, but also, as I'm finding out, for canyon driving. But the car still loves to rotate on throttle. You can just feel it, and it's controllable when it does that, as long as the road's not too bumpy. And the steering is definitely far from excellent. It's one of the early EPS racks from Honda. It doesn't have a ton of feedback, but that's not to say you can't make it feel good. I've driven modified S2000s with aftermarket coilovers, spherical bushings, custom alignment, so on and so forth, that have really good steering feel. So it is possible, but it takes a lot of work. And I'm glad that we're driving a nearly stock example because it's all too easy to find an S2000 that's been modified in the wrong way. Ooh. Hard to get into third gear sometimes though. That's always been the challenge with this gearbox. Oh, just love how nimble this car feels. Even though it's actually the heaviest one here, so eager to rotate on throttle and on entry. Oh yes. But what better way to start this comparison video than with an almost stock S2000. It's been the gold standard in this class of car for so, so long. And I would argue, even in 2024, it's hard to talk about the new BRZ or the new Miata being the very best sub 3,000 pound affordable Japanese FR sports car without at least mentioning the S2000. Best engine and gearbox by far, and that's without even having to drive the other two cars, but what about the handling, the overall confidence that it gives the driver? Will the BRZ TS and ND3 RF Grand Touring offer a more cohesive package? All right, we're now in the brand new 2024 Mazda Miata MX-5 ND3 generation. This is the Grand Touring. So we have the nicer interior, the creature comforts, but we don't get the Brembo brakes, the BBS wheels, and the Recaro seats, unfortunately. Those options come with the club trim. So this is more of a Grand Touring car, as the name would suggest. It's meant for comfort, but that doesn't mean it's not an amazing sports car. We're powered by the same engine as the prior ND2 model. It's a two liter in four cylinder naturally aspirated making 181 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque with the hardtop this weighs around 2450 pounds making it almost 400 pounds lighter than the s2000 and brz for the nd3 facelifted generation we have a retuned electric power steering rack with reduced friction which should increase the steering feedback and we also have a retuned LSD with increased lockup on deceleration and reduced lockup on acceleration. The overall net effect should be slightly more stable corner entry. You'd probably need to be on a racetrack to really feel that difference. But I did track one of these cars, the club trim actually. And I will say the car does feel more stable than the ND2 and the ND1. But still, it's a very lively car. It's very sensitive to your throttle inputs and your steering inputs and all of your inputs. Well, first impressions of the interior, this is obviously much nicer than the S2000. We get these very comfortable seats, not heavily bolstered, but still better than the seats you get in the S2000. The seating position is a bit lower, which is great. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes. The shifter is just a few inches away from the steering wheel, but definitely cramped. I would say even slightly more cramped feeling than the S2000. With the Grand Touring trim, we also get a front strut tower brace, as well as the Bilstein dampers that you don't get on the regular base model or sport model. The Bilstein dampers, by the way, also come in the club trim. For the ND3, we also get an updated infotainment display. It's a little bit shorter, but much wider, and appears to be higher resolution. It's definitely a nice upgrade. 
six-speed manual transmission. It's a great transmission, don't get me wrong, but it's not as good as that S2000 manual. But I will tell you, this car handles better than the S2000, objectively speaking. It has sharper turn-in, less slop in the steering rack, just off-center, and it's more nimble. It's the lighter car, that's what you'd expect. We have double wishbone suspension up front, multi-link in the rear. The S2000, of course, is double wishbone front and rear. But this car just wants to turn more eagerly. And even though the ND generations of Miata have always been criticized for having super soft suspension, even with the operated Bilstein dampers, this car leans less into corners than the S2000. The AP2 really is such a softly sprung and softly damped car. And also I can tell you right away that this retuned EPS for the ND3 is an improvement over the ND2 and definitely over the ND1. The on-center feedback is better now and it loads up more in the corners meaning the effort of the steering rack increases as you increase your lateral G's on the front tires which gives me a better sense of what the front end is doing and how close I'm getting to the limit of the tires such important information thankfully I can say that the ND3 finally gives me enough of that what it doesn't really give me is that very detailed information about the road surface through the wheel. But I've never driven a modern car with EPS that gives me as much information about the road surface as any of the best hydraulic racks from back in the day. 7,500 RPM redline. It's a very peppy and energetic little motor and it doesn't feel underpowered for this chassis. However, the engine sound is lacking. Even though it revs high, it doesn't make a particularly aggressive induction sound. Not nearly as aggressive as an S2000. Now, even though that AP2 we drove had an aftermarket intake and exhaust, even a bone stock S2000 has a much more characterful engine than this ND3. But this feels just as quick in a straight line, if not slightly quicker, because the engine's not as peaky and the car is so light. The mid-range of this engine actually is better than you might think. It feels like it has more mid-range torque relative to weight compared to an AP2. Great handling car. Do I wish it had firmer suspension and a lower ride height? Yeah, it would help this car corner even flatter. It doesn't really catch you off guard. That's the benefit of this softer suspension setup. It telegraphs its movements very clearly, so you always know what it's gonna do. Now, even though this doesn't have the upgraded Brembos of the club, it's not a big deal for canyon driving. There's no brake fade here. These brakes are far more effective than those of the S2000, that's for sure. Shifter, very nice and short throws, very short gear lever, but it doesn't have that mechanical connection to the transmission that you get with the S2000. This is definitely still one of the best manuals you can buy in a brand new car, but the S2000 is still the gold standard. But this steering is so much better. Very good throttle response, easy to heel toe. Ergonomically, it's just such an easy car to hop into and start driving hard. But this does have the smallest interior of any of these three cars, the smallest trunk as well, if you can believe that, given how small the S2000's trunk is. But that is slightly offset by the fact that this has by far the best interior in terms of build quality, materials, just the feeling of premiumness. If only 
only the engine had more character. That really might be one of only two complaints I have with the driving dynamics of this car from the factory. If it had more induction note and if the suspension was a bit lower and firmer. With those two things and the Recaro seats that you get with the club trim, this car might be perfect. So with that, it's time to hop into the BRZ TS and see if the upgrades made by STI have now made the BRZ an even better driver's car than the new Miata and the AP2S 2000. All right, last but not least, the 2024 Subaru BRZ TS. TS stands for Tuned by STI, and the only real mechanical difference with this car compared to a limited trim BRZ is the sax dampers front and rear and the Brembo brakes also front and rear. Now, before I get into the specs of this car, a quick word on MSRP or current market value between these three cars. A clean 06 plus AP2 S2000 in excellent condition, low mileage, let's say 50,000 or less, will run you about 30 to $35,000 today. The ND3 Miata RF Grand Touring we just drove has an MSRP with destination of about $39,000, although you can get soft top versions for closer to 30 to $35,000. And this BRZ TS has an MSRP with destination at just over 30 six grand. So very apples to apples between these three cars. Back to this BRZ. We're still powered by the same FA24 engine. It's a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated flat four boxer making 228 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. Dyno results have shown that this probably makes closer to 240 to 245 horsepower at the crank. The car weighs a little over 2,800 pounds. Six-speed manual transmission with a rear limited slip diff. This is a car that is very near and dear to my heart. Obviously, I owned a 2022 limited BRZ. The only difference with this being the blue stitching throughout the interior, the brakes, and the dampers. So, is this still one of the best driver's cars in this price range and how does it compare to the s2000 and nd3 i've been daily driving this car for the last couple days and i will tell you right away this has the worst clutch and shifter of these three cars the clutch is vague the engagement point is just you can't feel it very well this also has the most fake engine noise. Most people, on the internet at least, seem to really hate it. It doesn't bother me as much, at least I can hear the engine better than I can in the Miata, but it's definitely not a pleasant sound either. But it does have by far the most torque of these three engines. And you feel that right away. You don't feel like you have to keep this engine at its red line all the time. Although it does still rev to 7,400 and it builds nicely all the way to that number. The steering of the ND3 is better. This weights up nicely in the corners, but it has this slightly vague feeling just off-center that's more reminiscent of the S2000 steering rack. I would say in terms of best to worst steering, ND3 number one, BRZ number two, S2000 dead last. The other thing I'm noticing right away is that this car has the best suspension out of all three of these. This one feels even more stable at high speed and over bumps it has the least amount of excessive body motion. The suspension really does a great job at soaking everything up. Lots of fake induction note piped in through the speakers. So how about the shifter? I would say this has the worst shifter out of these three cars. And that's not dissing this shifter because it's actually very good. It's one of the better manuals you can get right now, brand new, but it doesn't have as slick of an action compared to the ND3 and it's definitely not as mechanical as that S2000 shifter. In terms of daily driving, because of that weird clutch engagement and because of the amount of rev hang that surprisingly this engine has, it makes it a little tricky to drive and stop and go traffic. You don't have that same problem in the Miata or the S2000. But 
but this suspension is really impressing me. And the brakes, the Brembos feel so solid. I wish we had a club trim NT3 with the Brembos to compare against this. out of these three cars is the easiest to drive really hard meaning when you're at or beyond the limit this is the easiest car to control you can slide this thing around all day even as an intermediate level driver the nd3 and s2000 are a lot less forgiving in that regard and the brz feels the most confidence inspiring overall especially with this TS suspension. I think I overlooked them when I drove this car on track at Road America a couple weeks back because Road America has a very smooth surface. You don't really get to go over many bumps. But on this very bumpy canyon road, these dampers are really showing why you'd pay that extra few thousand dollars. I would say the brakes alone would be worth the additional roughly $2,500 that you pay over a limited BRZ. Assuming you wanna keep the suspension and brakes of your car stock, $2,500 actually feels like a bargain for these parts. Oh yeah. This car just inspires more confidence than either of the other two. It's not the most nimble. That award still goes to the Miata. And it's not the most exciting. I would argue that the S2000, because of the engine and gearbox, and the relatively snappy handling is still the most thrill inducing, but I honestly think this might feel in some ways the most technically proficient. Even without the brakes and suspension, just a longer wheelbase chassis, the fact that there is a tiny bit of turn and understeer, while the car still offers you plenty of power oversteer at the touch of the throttle, it's the easiest to drive hard. And I wanna say that's the same conclusion that I had when I drove the ND2 versus CRS2000 versus my BRZ. And when you're really starting to push this car, when you're at speed, the vague clutch feel and the slightly imprecise shifter, they no longer become problems. Which car is the most fun to drive? for the $30,000 to $40,000 price range of Japanese front-engine rear-wheel drive manual transmission sports cars. It's so hard for me to answer that because all three of these cars have their strong points and they have their weaknesses, but I think in bone stock form, the S2000 really is lacking a lot. The brakes, the suspension, the wobbliness of the chassis even, it makes the car feel so dated. The engine and transmission are fantastic, but if that's not your priority, don't go for the S2000. Between the Miata ND3 and the BRZ TS, as much as I love the steering feel of that Miata and the lightweight nimbleness, I still think the BRZ is the more approachable driver's car and it rewards the inexperienced as well as the advanced drivers. And for that reason, it's still gonna be my pick. So big shout out to the owner of that S2000, Josh, and a big shout out to Mazda and Subaru for making this review possible. Let me know how you think these three cars compare. Which would you pick for your, say, $35,000? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.